मिस्टर बैनर्जी आस्ट भगवान श्री रमन महर्षि व्हाट इज़ द डिफरेंस बिटवीन जीवन मुक्ति एंड विधेय मुक्ति भगवान सेड देर इज़ नो डिफरेंस फॉर दोज हु आस्क इट इज सेड दैट द रियलाइज मैन विद द बॉडी इज अ जीवन मुक्ता एंड दैट ही अटेन्स विधेय मुक्ता वैन ही शेड्स द बॉडी बट दिस डिफरेंस एग्जिस्ट ओनली फॉर द ओन लुकर नॉट फॉर हिम हिज स्टेट इज द सेम बिफोर शेडिंग द बॉडी एंड आफ्टर we think of him as a human form or as in that form but he knows that he is the self the one reality both inner and outer which is not bound by any form there is a verse in the bhagavata bhagwan here quoted the verse in tamil which says that just a drunken man doesn't notice whether he is wearing his shawl or whether it has fallen off so the realized man is hardly aware of his body and it makes no difference to him whether it remains or drops off there are no stages in realization or mukti there are no degrees of liberation so there cannot be one stage of liberation with the body and another when the body has been shed the realized man knows that he is the self and that nothing neither his body not anything else exist but the self to such a one what difference could the presence or absence of our body make mr benerji said when i entered the hall bhagwan was answering some questions and was saying there is no difference between the dream and the waking states except that the former is short and the later long both are the product of the mind because the waking state last long we imagine it to be a real state but actually a real state is what is sometimes called the fourth state which is always as it is and is unaffected by waking dream or sleep because we call these three states we call that a state also however it is really just the natural state of the self a fourth state would imply something relative whereas that is transcendent our real nature is liberation but we imagine that we are bound and we make strenuous efforts to get free although all the while we are free this is understood only when we reach that state then we shall be surprised to find that we were practically striving to attain something that we always were and are an illustration will make this clear a man goes to sleep in this hall he dreams he has gone on a world tour and is traveling over hill and dale forest and plain desert and sea across various continents and after many years of weary and strenuous travel he returns to this country which is triru pannamalai enters the ashram and walks into the hall just at the moment he wakes up and finds that he has not moved at all but has been sleeping where he lay down he has not returned after great efforts to this hall but was here all the time it is exactly like that if it is asked why being free we imagine ourselves bound i answer by being in the hall did you imagine you were on a world tour crossing hills and dale desert and sea it is all mind or maya under whatever name and form one may worship the absolute reality it is only a mean of realizing it which is without name and form that alone is true realization wherein one knows one self in relation to that reality attains peace and realizes one's identity with it the duality of subject and object the trinity of seer sight and seen can exist only if supported by the one if one turns inwards in search of that one reality they fall away those who see that this are those who see wisdom they are never in doubt what is the truth of the scriptures which declare that if one sees the self one sees god how can one see one self 
if since one is a single being one cannot see one's self how can one see god only by becoming a prey to him the divine gives light to the mind and shines within it except by turning the mind inward and fixing it it in the divine there is no other way to know him to the mind if one acquires who am i within the mind the individual i falls down abashed as soon as one reaches the heart and immediately reality manifests itself spontaneously as i i although it reveals itself as the i it is not the ego but the perfect being the absolute self for him who is immersed in the bliss of the self arising him the extinction of the ego but remains to be accomplished he is not aware of anything other than the self who can comprehend his state although the scriptures proclaim thou art that is only a sign of weakness of mind to meditate i am that not this because you are eternally that who has to be done is to investigate what ben really is and remain as that it is ridiculous either to say i have not realized the self or i have realized the self are there two selves for one to be the subject object of the other's realization it is a truth within the experience of everyone that there is only one self it is due to illusion born of ignorance that man fail to un- recognize that which is always and for everybody the inherent reality dwelling in its natural heart center and to abide in it and that instead they argue that it exists or it doesn't exist that it has a form or doesn't have form or is non dual or dual to seek and abide in the reality that is always attained is the only attainment all other attainments siddhis are such as are acquired in dreams can they that are established in the reality and are free from maya be deluded by them as long as a man is the doer he also reaps the fruit of his deeds but as soon as he realizes the self through inquiry as to who is the doer his sense of being the doer falls away and the triple karma is ended this is the state of eternal liberation only as long as one considers oneself bound do thoughts of bondage and liberation continue when one inquires who is bound the self is realized eternally attained eternally free when through the bond, through of bondage comes to an end can thoughts of liberation survive if it is said that liberation is of three kinds with form without form or with and without form then let me tell you that the extinction of the ego that ask which form of liberation is true is the only true vibration hari om tat sat